Hey, good morning. Today is Sunday. It is the eighth day of Shvat. And we begin chapter 18 in the Tanya. And in this chapter, in a way, it begins not only a new chapter, but begins a new part of the Tanya <clears throat> explaining. It takes the, the next level to the time of the Tanya. Up until now, Dal Tereba explained how it is close, it is close, it is near to us to serve Hashem. How is it done to serve Hashem? And he explained the long way, what he calls it in the beginning of the Tanya, the long but short way. Based on the verse, it says, It is very close to you. It is very near to you. In your mouth and your, and, and your heart to do it. In other words, to serve Hashem <clears throat> properly, he explained, first of all, first, the best way is through understanding. Contemplating the greatness of Hashem, which when you come contemplate the greatness of Hashem, this, if you are able to reach that level of understanding so deeply that it should affect your emotion, that, that you should get a feeling, a palpable feeling of love and fear of Hashem. Once you develop that, then the, the, to do the action is, much, is, is very easy. From the, from the feeling when a person is excited about something, he's going to do anything and everything. However, not everybody's capable of creating such a love and fear to Hashem in his heart through contemplation. So then, al Rebbe said, the good news, even if you're not capable that much, to really create a palpable love and fear of Hashem in your heart. Still, it is close to serve Hashem in, in a full way. How? By creating and developing a, what we call intellectual emotions. A conviction that this is the right thing. So that is much, much easier than really achieving a real feeling of love to something which is foreign to us, frankly speaking, because we are familiar with this physical material world and whatever we are attracted to is very physical, whatever we see. To achieve a feeling of love to Hashem and really love God <clears throat> rather than materialistic things, which those things usually don't go side by side, they don't go together. If, you, if your heart desires materialistic things, <clears throat> it cannot change to, to serve Hashem, to, to develop the feeling of, of love to Hashem and so on. It takes a lot of work. And being that not everybody is able to do it, so it says Dalta Rebbe that you really, if you can get to the point of contemplating and getting to understanding and a conviction that this is the right thing. And although, yes, my heart goes, <clears throat> feels something else, but I know that this is the right thing, and you act on this understanding and this conviction, then this is also considered a very tamer, complete work of serving Hashem properly. That's what we al Rebbe said until now in the last 17 chapters. Now the Alter, Rebbe, the, the Alter Rebbe comes to tell us, it takes us a step further. And it says, you see, the verse, the Alter Rebbe bases this whole teaching, the whole book, is that the verse, Ki adavo me'oid, that this thing, to serve Hashem <clears throat> fully, is not only close, but koriv me'oid, it is very close. So that word, the very close, says the Alter Rebbe, this suggests that there is no need really to contemplate anything. It is so close, it, it, you don't need to work to get there. You have it. It is so close to you. 
This, this is what the Alter Rebbe starts to explain in this chapter, chapter 18, that there are some people who are not capable of developing not even the intellectual level. Some people, whether they're not, they, they're not capable to intellectually to do it, or their heart, their heart is so far away from anything spiritual that for them to develop something like this is really, really difficult. Says the Alter Rebbe, now we have good news that is very near. There is something that you have there from birth and you don't have to work to have it. You have to reveal it. So this, let's see what the Alter Rebbe explains in this chapter, chapter 18, we're gonna look inside. Just a minute. Okay. Here we are. Chapter 18, says the Alter Rebbe, Uletoi, bir, hetef, milas me'oid, to explain more clearly and more precisely the word very, that it's very close. Sheba pasu ki me'oid, in the verse for this thing, is very near to you, it's very close to us to, to serve Hashem, to do everything. One should recognize with certainty. He said that even the person who has only a limited understanding of God's greatness, so that he lacks the materials necessary for meditation. So we, because we explained that through meditation, through meditation in the greatness of Hashem, you can develop at least, if not a, a palpable love and, f- and fear of Hashem, at least a, a, a conviction and an intellectual love and fear. But what if a person does not have that as well? And he has no heart to comprehend the greatness of the blessed infinite God. Meaning that his mind and heart are not suited to meditation, so that he lacks the tools of meditation. Which this meditation is supposed to do what? Supposed to create fear and love to Hashem. To produce through meditation a fear and love, even in his mind and understanding alone, meaning the second level of fear and love of Hashem, even that is not capable. Nevertheless, this is a very near thing for him to guard. Lishma velasa is called mitzvah is atira vesalma tira keneget kulam. To guard himself from transgressing the prohibition, commandment, prohibitive commandments through a fear of God, and to practice the positive commandments which require a love of God. So these together compri- comprising all the commandments of the Tera. And in particular, the study of Teira, which counterbalances them all. The study of Teira is the most important thing. It is near to us, even to that person that is not capable of developing this love. And how and he can fulfill all this in his mouth and, his, and in his heart. In the true sense of the heart. From the depth of his heart, in an absolute sincerity, 
with love and fear of Hashem, is able to do it. Everyone is able to do it. Everyone is capable of doing it. How? Says Dalte Rebbe, here's the deal. Here's the secret. She avo mesuseres she believe klolus Israel she Yerusha lonem aviseinu. This is the hidden love present in the heart of all Jews, which is an inheritance to us from our patriarchs. That's what Alter Rebbe says. This is the this is the secret. Even if you think that you're not capable, even if you're not, you think you have nothing, you have no background, you don't know what's, what's, where to start, you don't know how to meditate about the greatness of Hashem, whether you're not capable intellectually, whether you're not there emotionally, says al Rebbe, you should know that you have this. You have this point, this pintaliyid is in you. And this is an inheritance. What's a, what, what is an inheritance? The Rebbe points out another place, it says that you have... Uh, you can acquire something in different ways. You can buy something, or you can get a gift. It can be gifted to you, or you can inherit. What is the difference? When you buy something, you pay for it. You pay the value of what, of what you get. When you're gifted something, somebody gives you a gift, you, do, you don't pay for it, but still, the Gemara says a person doesn't give a gift unless something was, unless he has a good reason to give a gift, meaning that you did something good and that's why he gives you a gift. But when it comes to an inheritance, the person who inherits did nothing. He just inherits. Why? Because he's a child. He can be smart, he can be stupid, he can be big, he can be small, he can be an old person, can be a young child, doesn't matter. A child from, from birth, a one day child can also inherit everything. Says the Alter Rebbe, this love, this hidden love that there is in every single yid to Hashem, that is something that is an inheritance and every person has it. And that's why he calls it it is very near to you to, to, to do the right thing because of that love. And that was the Alter Rebbe is going to elaborate and explain and in al begins the explanation but like this. It says, Rak, Shetzorich levayer lehagdim, Shetzorich levayer lehagdim t'chila bay reitev, Shoyresh ahav azu v'inyana. But we must first preface a clear and precise explanation of the origin of this love. Says we need to explain a few things. Number one, we have, to, we, have, we have to understand what is the origin of this love. Where does it come from? Because the love that we explained earlier, the love that comes from meditation, we know where it comes from. It comes from the intellect. If you are capable of understanding to the point that you develop a feeling, so that's the root of the love. But where is the root of that love, of the hidden love that he calls it? Where is it coming from? Number two, we need to understand ve'inyana and its character. What sort of striving this love constitutes? Number three, we need to understand ve'eich i Yerushalano. How, how did this love become our inheritance? In other words, love how could he inher inherit love? The certain things, certain characteristic of a person can, can, be, the, can be transferred by the, through the DNA to a child. But, but when it comes to love of Hashem, if, we, if it's something, you know, if you're, uh, I mean, think about if your person uh, understands certain things, does this understanding automatically transfer to the child? It doesn't. If, if uh, the, the capability of understanding, the faculties of intellect, that can be transferred in the DNA. But when we're talking about to understand the greatness of Hashem, to love Hashem, how can this be transferred in an inheritance from father to child? And question number four is, How 
Does one inherit the love? And how is fear also incorporated in it? Because to serve Hashem, it's not enough to serve Hashem with love. You need to have the ser- serving Hashem. The love includes also fear of Hashem. Those are four questions al is asking. And al is going to elaborate in starting by tomorrow's class. There's a story of uh, one of the tzaddikim that um, I don't remember all the details of the story, but the point of the story was when tzaddik, when they, they realized it was a child that was in a very high level and they, he gave an example, used a metaphor. He said that it was once a mountain climber that was climbing up a mountain. Very, very difficult mount, mountain to climb. Many people tried. They didn't make it. And this mountain climber climbs and climbs and finally is, he made it to the top, he made it to the summit. And he comes up in the summit, and to his surprise, he sees a child walking around. And he says to him, how did you get here? You know how many professional mountain climbers tried to climb this mountain and they didn't make it? How did you get on top of this mountain? And he says to him, very simple, I was born here. I was born here. You see, that is the difference between the love that we're talking about in the up, up until chapter 18, we're talking about the mountain climbing. Mountain climbing through studying, through understanding, meditating, contemplating. And to do that, first of all, you have to know Hasidus. You have to know the, the, what you, what, what, to study what? The greatness of Hashem. That's how we learn the Hasidus. The more Mamarim, the more Hasidus you learn, the more great, the greater you're able to understand. But here, the Alter Rebbe comes and says that after all is said and done, even a person is not capable of climbing that mountain. You should know that in a sense, he was born on top of the mountain. We were born with this natural love to Hashem that connects us directly to Hashem. And when we reveal that, and we tap into that love, that that innate love that we have, that's there, it's existing in us, then even without all this hard work of mountain climbing, we can be there. This is one of the um, revolutionary, revolutionary ideas that the Alter Rebbe came here and with this Tanya. Because up until now, these chapters that we learned until now, it was, it was accepted, it was understood, even in the people who didn't study Hasidus also understood the concept. Yes, of course, with Hasidus, you have to, you have, to have the details. But this was a revolutionary idea to say that a simple Jew there is no background, there's no capability of uh, studying Torah and, those, and, and understanding the greatness of godliness. That it's there, the Ahava Mesoteras, the Pintal Yid is there too. So this is the end of today's shir. Metz Hashem will continue tomorrow with answering the questions that Alter Rebbe raised here.